Thanks for stopping by and checking out my video. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. And what I'm talking about specifically are the grips. You can see on this Canic that the grips are not very aggressive. They're not very grippy. And on this Canic, they're very aggressive and they're very grippy. Which, for many different purposes, you want to be very aggressive and very grippy. Specifically in this situation, competition shooting. So, purpose of this whole video is I've, I've done this myself and I looked through YouTube and a bunch of other sources and couldn't really find a good video that shows the process start to end. It's a mid process or it's not a good process or people are just making it too hard. So, I'm going to show you from start to end how to take your gun from this to this. And it's very easy and it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes once you gather your supplies. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about are the supplies that you might need. No, you don't need mixed nuts, um, but you're gonna need some automotive type thin tape. I use a little bit thicker painter's tape and I'll show you how to use both of those in a minute. Razor blade just for cutting the tape and cleaning up some stuff. I've got a, just a little piece of sandpaper, looks like 320 grit. That's just gonna rough up my grip surface and allow the epoxy that we're gonna use to make it stick a little bit better. I got some 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. That's just to clean everything up. A Couple of just cheap brushes. This is just a really cheap uh, chip brush that I got, I think in a bulk pack from Harbor Freight. I've got a little inexpensive paintbrush. Got a couple of wooden stick Q-tips. Uh, I like to stir the epoxy with those. And then before I figured out the beauty of this little paintbrush, I would do detail work with those. Then I've got this epoxy. It's a Bob Smith Industries 30 minute slow cure. Uh, there's all kinds of epoxies you can use, but I just like this one because it gives you time to actually do your work. Whereas some of the faster cures, you gotta really hustle to get it done before it starts curing and you can get your uh, silicone carbide on your grip. So then what I did is I wasn't quite sure which grip I wanted or which, I guess, which uh, coarseness I wanted. So this says coarse on it, but this is 36. This is considered extra coarse. This one is, if you can see that, is a 4670, which is considered coarse. And then I've got a 6090, which is like kind of like a medium coarse. And the difference between these is how, how big the pieces are. Uh, and these two are mixes, and then this one's just a solid coarse 36 grit. What I recommend doing is something like this. And what I did is I just took an uh, old hockey stick that I had pieces of, and I chopped up a couple of uh, like hand size grips, and I mixed up the epoxy, painted it on, and I silicone carbided these just so I could see what it felt like in my hand. So I kind of had an informed choice of, of kind of which one that I wanted. And these things, you know, are varying degrees of aggressiveness. I mean, this one's super aggressive. Uh, you got to be careful with this stuff because it might feel good, you know, just squeezing it or whatever, but you can see little particles break off. But I've gripped my guns a couple of times after I put this on and it visibly leaves cuts in your hands if you grip it hard. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom in on that. See right there, you can see that's not one to zoom in. But you can see some scratches and stuff on my hands. That's just from simply gripping my gun uh, with the silicone carbide on it. And I actually chose to go with the 4670, the middle grit. Uh, the 6090 feels grippier because there's a lot more little particles that are gripping. But I feel that when I wear like a pro grip on my hands or my hands get dirty or whatever, this one's going to clog up really fast. So I went with the middle one, uh, which is a coarse grip uh, and, and very aggressive. But I went with this one because I don't think it'll clog up as soon. And I think this one's just a little bit too much, especially starting out with using silicone carbide grips. Um, you know, I come coming from CZ and like Henning uh, aluminum grips, which are aggressive in their own right, but they're nothing like this. So I wanted to go just with the middle ground. I feel this one, you know, this is going to gonna need to be kept clean and, and brushed out a bunch and 
you know, just after use, these are going to wear down a little bit too. So I felt this 4670 grit uh, was one of the, the better choices. And I will post links in the description below where you can get all this stuff, uh, especially the, the bags of silicone carbide, uh, the epoxy, this other stuff. You're kind of on your own. Uh, pick it up at Home Depot, Harbor Freight, Lowe's, whatever. Uh, and, and really, you don't need anything specific. You can use whatever you want. The most important part is the silicone carbide stuff. So uh, I'm going to get this set up, and we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you how to prep your frame and get it ready. All right, so first thing first, we're going to make sure the gun is empty. That's good. We're going to go ahead and field strip the pistol. And we'll just set the slide aside. We're not going to need that anytime soon. And essentially, this is all, all we need to do. We don't need to break it down any further. Uh, some people like to take you know everything off. I'm all about minimal. Get this done as quick as possible. So I'm going to put this gun here, this other one here, just so I can reference kind of where I, I drew the lines and stuff. And, and basically I'm just gonna draw that with tape. So I'm just gonna take my, my automotive tape and I'm just gonna trace the same lines and I'll use small pieces uh, and just get it to look this close to that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want them to look you know, somewhat the same. One's my main gun, one's my backup gun. And what I really want to point out here is there's this little, uh, there's this little, uh, pinhole right here that has one of the, the pins that holds in the, the sear block and stuff. So I'm going to tape over that so I don't have to worry about it. And then there's a couple more. There's another one here. I've got this Taylor Freelance brass backstrap that, uh, uh, set screw hole there. I'm going to show you how to get around that without taping over it. I don't want to waste time trying to cut out like a perfect little tape circle or something. Um, that's what the little brush comes for, and I'll show you, or not comes for, is for, and I'll show you how I do that when we get to that part. So we'll go ahead and continue taping off this frame, and uh, I'll come back as soon as I'm done taping it all off, and we'll go from there. All right, I'm back. I got everything taped off. Show you a little bit more of a close-up view here, but you can see there's not a lot of taping. Um, make sure, get around the mag release, make sure I get around the slide release, and then I just kind of form where I want the grip to be. Make sure you tape over the other side of the mag release, and then you can see underneath the undercut. I don't want this to go too far up in there. Uh, usually you just, just run it straight across there, and you can take as little or as much time as you want to get this perfect. I got it really close to the other one. It's going to look fine. And there's some final shaping we can do as well. So next step is I grab my little piece of sandpaper. And I do this after I put the tape on just so I'm not sanding the rest of the frame and messing it up. So I'm just going to scuff it up lightly. It's nothing crazy. It's just to put some scratches on the polymer. Uh, so the epoxy has a little bit more to hold to. Uh, the epoxy really hangs on good anyways. But we're just adding a little insurance. Especially on this brass piece back here. This, uh, If you have the Taylor Freelance backstrap, uh, you can see that that paint comes off there pretty easily. So I'll get that pretty good. Just scuff that up so the epoxy's got a nice scuffed up surface to attach to there and everything else really just gets like a light just a scratch basically it's just like when you're painting any surface you want to scuff up the the base coat a little bit That's about good. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a little rag or microfiber or whatever. You don't want to use paper towel uh, because it'll it can um, get little fuzzies and stuff that go inside this grip. Because even though this isn't very aggressive, it's still got some texture. And I'm just gonna wipe it down really good. 
get all the stuff off there, maybe all the grease, the the paint residue, anything that's left in your your little grip panels here. Just wipe it down really well to make sure all, and especially like the oils and stuff from your hands. You're gonna not wanna touch this after you do this part. You're gonna wanna go directly into applying the epoxy to it, so. Which is fine because, believe it or not, we're almost done here. Just make sure you clean it really good. I mean, honestly, the the hardest part about this is the prep work, and as you can see, it's really not that hard. But the better you prep it, the better the outcome is in the end, so. All right, I've seen, that's good for now. I've seen a bunch of guys that'll plug the magwell. I don't think that's necessary because I'm not gonna be applying epoxy or silicone carbide to that area. So I just leave it open. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wide painter's tape. I'm just gonna lay down a couple of strips. And you can use a paper plate for this. Uh, you can use a little cup if you want to, whatever. But this is just going to be my mixing surface for the epoxy. And I just don't want it to soak into the cardboard. So then I'm going to grab my epoxy. And again, this is the BSI, uh, Bob Smith Industries 30 minute slow cure. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put equal amounts. And these are, uh, they're actually graduated. So you can see uh, what the amounts are, or you can just do it by looking. So I'm just going to take the caps off and I'm just going to squeeze a glob on here and I did my other grip so I know about what works. This will, about a glob that big will give me just a little bit left over. And then I'm just going to make an equal size glob right next to it. All right, I'm gonna let that sit there a second before I mix it, but I wanna show you this too. So these cheap chip brushes, uh, they have like loose fibers in them. So you're gonna wanna just like kind of tug on it and try to get all the loose. It's not the end of the world if one gets on your grip because you can pick it out uh, and the epoxy is kind of self healing. Um, once or, once you pull it out, it's not gonna leave like a run or anything, but I just give it a good, good tug to get everything off there. And then that's prepped and ready to go. All right, so looks like I got a little bit more of the hardener than I do the actual epoxy, so I'm just going to add a little bit more epoxy here to equal it out. And I just take my little Q-tip, I take the stick side of it, and I just mix it together really well. This stuff doesn't really change colors or anything. It kind of becomes a little more yellow than it was, but since it's on a blue background, it's kind of hard to tell, but just mix it. Like you'll, you can feel that it like gets a little bit thicker as you mix it. Oh, I broke my stick. That's all right. So you're gonna mix this up really well. Kind of fold it in on itself so you're making sure you're getting it all mixed together. All right, and after you feel like you got it mixed up pretty well, get as much off the little stick as I can. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little brush and <clears throat> I'm going to grab epoxy on the brush and those pinholes uh, and like the uh, set screw hole that I told you about. I'm going to like cut in around those with this more fine brush without getting it in the hole. There we go. And I'll just paint the epoxy on like that. And it's only three spots that I need to do this. This is going to be the, the back strap here and the set screw for that. And the only reason is, is I don't want to go completely over that in case I ever want to take this off, which I don't know why I would, but I'd like to just leave that as an option. And if I need to punch this rear pin out here, I just 
make sure we can access it. And you don't want to be like uh, chintzy with the epoxy, like kind of paint it on thick. Because this is what your grit is going to adhere to. All right, once I have those cut in all nice, I'm going to go ahead and throw my that brush to the side. Then I'm just going to take the bigger brush, get it nice and saturated. Actually, I forgot. I'm going to go around uh, the mag release button here too, just so. Just so I don't have a bunch of extra epoxy in there. All right. All right, and then I'm just going to paint the rest of the grip quickly. Kind of dab it in there. Make sure that all of the little, especially in the this grip here, you can see that this texturing uh, it kind of soaks up a little bit more epoxy than the, the normal plastic in the grip. So I just like dab the brush all in there, and then I'm going to just kind of like smooth it over to make sure that I've got an even coat on there. And you'll be able to see there's little divots and stuff if you don't get it all. Same with the, the Taylor Freelance grip module thing there. And I'm going to touch up around the other side because I don't want epoxy down in this little ledge here. Just kind of helps with the small brush getting the little areas. It's harder to get the big brush in. All right, and so that's pretty good right there. You can see that it's all kind of like even and see how it's smooth and like there's no real dots or anything. Uh, that's perfect, that's how I want it. I do have a little hair right here for my brush, so I'm just gonna get that out of there just with the edge of my razor blade. That'll just kind of flow back in. I'm gonna check over the whole grip just to make sure I don't have any more of those. And then if it looks good, I'm going to go ahead and apply my carbide. I've got one little low spot right here. I'm going to hit. All right. And I think that is good. Everything looks good. Um, along the bottom here, I want to make sure that I don't have any epoxy there. So I just run my finger along there sometimes when I'm painting it. I guess I could tape that, but this is just as easy to do with my finger. Just get the epoxy out the bottom. So we're good there. Next thing I'm going to grab is my bowl and a little spoon that I have. Uh, just like a plastic junkie spoon. And I'm going to take my grid of choice, which is the 4670. All right, now this is where... I'm gonna take the grip and I'm just gonna hold it at an angle down like this so I don't get a bunch of grit going inside the magwell. Um, I just want the grit on the, the grip itself. So, and you just grab it and sprinkle it on. Be generous with it and then I shake it off. Just work my way around the grip. Again, shake it off when I'm done. I'm going to get the underside. All 
All right, so that's the first initial coat. I'm gonna give it a little tap. And I can sit here and I can see, I don't know if this is gonna pick it up or not, but you can see like up here and like right here, it starts to like wet out a little bit. So what that is is basically the epoxy is absorbing the silicone carbide that I've put on the grip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it sit here for a minute. And right here, you can, I can see it's pretty, I don't know if the lights, oh, there we go. You can see that shiny part. That's where it's like wetting out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep sprinkling carbide over that uh, until it doesn't do that anymore. And not to take away from anybody else's videos or whatever, there's all kinds of ways to do this, but I've just found that this way gives you the most professional looking, I guess, job uh, without having to pay a professional to do it because this really isn't that hard. And I don't know what people charge to do this. I've seen some prices as high as 200 bucks. And sure, I guess if you don't know how to do it or if it was a little tougher, I would, you know, I'd pay somebody to do that. But I mean, this is fairly simple stuff here. So the bowl catches all the stuff that, you know, you can see there's more in the bowl than there is on the grip. And I'll just start scooping from the bowl instead of the bag now as I recoat this over and over again. And now there's a couple of ways of thought I've seen of doing this. Um, one video I came across the guy actually takes the grit and like pushes it into the grip and that I don't think you need to do that uh, and it makes it just kind of look clumpy and not good and I don't know just not the preferred method that I like to use so Give it a little tap. <clears throat> we'll just sit here and wait a second. This stuff's going to start curing. Uh, it's it, it's not a fast cure. It's you know a really slow cure, but it'll start curing, and you can kind of see that this builds up the grip a little bit more, but also to the touch um, down here on the bottom. Let's see if I can get that to pick it up. You can see along the magwell, there's little bits like sticking up. Uh, once this cures a little bit more, I'll just take my finger and like tap it and tap it into the edge there. Uh, so that those little pieces aren't sticking off the end of the grip like that. I don't want that. I just want this to be a nice smooth interface into the magwell. And that's it. I'm going to turn the camera off here for a second. I'm going to do this process a few more times and I will flip it back on once we get to the next step. All right, we're back. It's been a couple minutes. Uh, sprinkled carbide over the grip a few more times you can see it's pretty much in its final form now just need to let it sit there and cure uh, i'm going to clean up these little bits on the magwell here just with my finger get those off of there i don't want that actually hardening and staying on there uh, and then the little uh, pinholes here got a little bit more grit in them than i like so i'm just going to take the end of this uh, Q-tip stick and just kind of clean them out. <sighs> just to make sure that I can get in there if I need to. And I mean, if you know where they're at and you run a punch through there, it's going to be fine. I just like them to be visible just for, I don't know why, honestly, but I do. So while the epoxy has not set, it's easier to clean them up right now. And you can see that's definitely much more cleared out. And then we'll just do this side and we'll be all set with this. Try 
truth be told, when I was painting this grip, I probably got a little wild around those holes, but that's okay. All right, we're all set there. Now this has had, I don't know, it's probably been 10 minutes since I mixed the epoxy or so. <clears throat> I want to get this tape off uh, before this stuff starts setting up. And you can see like the edge isn't quite clean and whatever. And that's what that tape does. It gives me those crisp edges. So I'm going to start peeling this tape off. And I'm going to try to get it so I can grab a piece that will run a nice crisp edge uh, where I want the epoxy to stay just so it's a little bit cleaner line. And sometimes this doesn't quite work right. And it's hard to show you I'm trying to capture all this on the camera too. All right, here we go. Here's one. All right, so you can see that that, that edge is kind of funky there. Just gonna peel this off right around. All right, there we go. So you can see my edges are nice and crisp and clean. There's a little bit of epoxy seep, but I'll just go through with my thumb and you can just clean that up. Um, I wanna make sure that <clears throat> I go all the way around, kind of along the edge where that, that tape like pulled away, the, the silicone carbide will stick up a little bit. So I just kind of tap it down with my finger Give it a nice clean edge there. And there's a couple of spots like right here where the epoxy, oops, I'm off camera, right here where the epoxy seeped like under the tape. Let's take a Q-tip and like clean that up before it cures and dries. There we go, so I have a nice edge there now too. Now I just look through, make sure everything's looking good. Got a little seepage underneath the trigger guard here. Clean that up. I'll tap it down just a little bit right down there where that tape cut through. All right, then I'm going to check the mag release button, make sure that it's working and there's no silicone carbide like up against there or anything. I can see there's a few pieces down in there. So I'll grab the, the razor blade here and I'll just go through. And I'm not really cutting anything. I'm just catching that, that carbide and taking it out of there so it doesn't interfere with the gun's function or eventually break off and get stuck down there. And you can also use the edge of this razor uh, to form your lines a little bit better too. Like say this one was messed up. I could come in here and I could just like kind of push this down a little bit. I don't really need to do it on this, but I'm just kind of showing you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, everything looks pretty good on this one. I've got a little bit of cleanup to do. And then the next thing you want to do is you just want to let this sit. Um, the stuff... It's 30 minute working time. It says it cures in six hours and it's ready to handle in 24 hours. I just let this sit overnight uh, and you've got yourself a nice silicone carbide grip. So uh, if you have any questions or anything, post them down below. Again, like I said before, I'll post the link to all the supplies. 
uh, good luck. This is not something that's that's hard to do. Uh, and, you know, and if you shoot a lot, you're going to wear this off your gun and it's nice to be able to redo it. So, uh, hope you like this. Hope it was informative. Hope you learned something. Talk to you next time.